I will uh, go ahead and hit start. I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yep. Let me open up the presentation. All right. You ready, Alvi? On three. All right. Let me, um, as soon as we hit the record here. Should we give a couple of minutes for people to join? We're live. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Chris with Perfect Video Conferencing. Um, today, today's webinar is It's Just Not That Complicated or Is It? Customer Lessons Learned from IT and AV. Um, if you're having any issues with audio or with joining, um, or if you know anyone that is having any issues, please have them contact myself, Chris Alvarez, at 516-282-2828 or Riddell Wilson at 516-282-2817. We'll be here to uh, take your calls. Um, and now I'll introduce you to your moderator, Chris Henschel. Chris, take it away. Hi, and thank you for joining us today uh, for the discussion of customer lessons learned from IT and AV. We're hoping you leave here today with a better understanding of some of the best practices for network deployment, management, and planning, so video calls are flawless, uh, understanding the pitfalls encountered when planning conference rooms and collaboration spaces, and how these factors play out in some real-life deployments we've worked on. Also, we hope you leave here with understanding about how the approach we bring to the table at Advantage Microsystems and perfect video conferencing makes the difference in video conferencing deployments. So with us today to go through the discussion, we have the team from Advantage Microsystems and from Perfect Video Conferencing. So we have Randy Marcon, our CEO from Perfect Video Conferencing, waving there. And then from Advantage Microsystems, we have the team uh, led by Steve Hart, and we have Adam and Rob from the team as well. And they're gonna talk about some projects that we worked on together and how some of the factors you need to think about in deployments come together from both an IT and a AV perspective in making them successful. So I know there's two different, um, uh, two different deployments that we wanted to talk about in today's call. And one of them involved a customer, Javad, who um, went with uh, the LifeSize system. Uh, Randy and, and Steve, do you wanna talk a little bit about what, uh, what that deployment looked like and how that came to be? Sure. I think we also, uh, for the purposes of this recording, it might be good for us to talk a little bit about uh, what we do and our core competencies. So um, I'm going to hit pause on the uh, the Javad nuances first, and then potentially talk a little bit about PVC, our value proposition, and then and hand that off to Steve so he can do those. Um, if that's okay, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's hear more about it. Good. Uh, much of our information is is loaded up on the website. So with uh, Alvarez helping out with our our slide content, I'll have him just pull up the Perfect Video Conferencing uh, website just as a reference point for those of you tuning in live or maybe watching in the future. Easiest way to to learn a little bit more about Advantage Micro or Perfect Video Conferencing is just to to go ahead and log in there. I want to call out specifically our values, though. So uh, you know, for us, our mission and our values are, are core to where we are. And I, ideally for us, we find clients that can uh, land in this partnership zone. And for us, it's innovation, uh, partnership, and values. So if you slide down just a little bit more, Chris, uh, you'll see that these uh, core values are key to who we are, uh, and that'll be exemplified in both the tea collection anecdote we talk about and the, uh, the Javad one. Uh, next up for us is about a, a guarantee on our services. So I see Chris has already got that queued up for the next uh, tab over again, all of this referenced. Uh, directly on our on our website. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. We're called perfect video conferencing for a reason. Um, ultimately, we want to make sure we get it right. And if we can't get it right, and uh, something's not working in your environment, you shouldn't have to pay for pay for us to make any margin on it. So uh, engage with your salesperson about this guarantee. We're quite proud of it, um, and it does allow you to have a reseller who stands up behind their promises and their values. And then uh, and then finally. Uh, we have an online store that we're looking to launch, so uh, you're welcome to, to navigate to store.perfectvc.com and see many of the, the products that we represent and sell uh, directly on there. But we are, by design, a value-added reseller. We like to flip that around a little bit and call ourselves a value-added 
partner. Certainly we don't um, manufacture cameras, but those cameras that we do choose to sell uh, and then support are ones that can help us strengthen the partnership with any of our clients and uh, ask for references. Uh, we'll be glad to give them to you. We, we even like giving you uh, references to those people who where things didn't go well. Um, we want to hold ourselves to a high standard, and it's, uh, sometimes if we can't uh, deliver based on facilities issues or some technology challenges, we may need to bring in some folks to help with the network, and that's where you'll hear the Advantage Micro uh, story come in. There are skills we don't have, but we do have the ability to have a, a great team to coordinate with, uh, great resources to collaborate with, and a, and a promise towards perfect. And so measure us based on um, us getting that right, and if we don't get it right, measure us against how we respond, because uh, that is one of the ways we stand out. So with that, uh, uh, both Chris's, I think uh, that's enough about PVC and me. I would hand it off to Steve to see if um, he's interested in telling us a little bit about Advantage Micro. Yeah, thank you, Randy. Uh, the uh, backstory to, to our company, we've been in business for about 20 years. Uh, Advantage Microsystems has clients all throughout the Bay Area. Uh, the, the focus of our organization is to provide uh, for smaller businesses, essentially an outsourced IT department service, uh, which includes a, a litany of services ranging from desktop support and help desk, server management, navigating cloud services, security, disaster recovery, compliance. Uh, for our larger clients, we're really focused around being an extension of their IT department in a very much in a partnership form, depending upon the, the business case and the business needs. Um, our differentiators, essentially, uh, we, we're very strategic with our clients. We're always on the lookout for business challenges, business growth problems, and, and how we can find IT solutions uh, uh, to help them you know, address those needs and, and meet with their goals. Uh, and, and to that end, uh, some, I think, 10 years ago, uh, we, we were on the lookout for a, for a great uh, AV vendor trying to uh, Get through a series of, of, of projects that we had with clients really really needing better video conferencing uh we did a whole industry search came across randy and his organization and it's, uh, it's been a great partnership for the last 10 years uh and, and, and really you know the success for our clients uh, starts with the success of two vendors working well with each other uh and, and that's why we've introduced uh, randy and his group to a number of our clients over the years um, really, our, uh, another main differentiator from us is we're extremely people focused. Uh, IT is not a one size fits all service. Uh, our clients appreciate being able to work with their group of dedicated technicians rather than a menagerie of different technicians uh, where results can be a little bit more difficult to achieve. Uh, so that's, that's us in a nutshell. Uh, our website's up there. Um, feel free to contact us if you need. And, and uh, Chris, I'll hand it back to you. Great, thank you. Uh, and touching on some of the history that uh, we've had together, I know that the uh, first deployment we're going to talk about at Javad was one of the ones uh, earlier in our partnership that you guys worked together on. Um, Randy, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what led to the choice of life size at Javad and, and how Advantage and PVC work together to make it happen? Uh, certainly. It, it speaks directly to the, the topic at, at hand, too. It, does it have to be complicated? And, and where is that intersection between uh, AV and, and audiovisual or traditional video conferencing and, and IT? Uh, just a, a, a word of logistics. I see a number of attendees coming in, and we are monitoring chat over time. So if you've got uh, questions, I do see a couple of those coming in. I encourage you to add those uh, questions in. The outcomes, again, as Chris uh, said today, is we wanted to point to some of the pitfalls or common mistakes that have been made and how to get a stronger long-term investment in any video conferencing platform. You'll see that uh, in this room and in this demo uh, recording in, in and of itself. So I'm using a, a systems-based video conferencing system, which is exactly what Javad did. The second client, T-Collection, used uh, some more bleeding edge or cutting edge technology and some freemium software. Uh, and so today's market has changed. Uh, the Javad story uh, talks about one that's been a lot more consistent. So again, the, to those of you who've joined, and, I, and again, I see some of the chat coming in, I'd welcome you to, to enter any questions. I know Chris will, um, uh, will, will, will fold those in. In between the Javad anecdote and the T collections, we are gonna do a, a, a group poll. So stay tuned, stay tuned for that as well. Um, this is a customer who's been very loyal to video conferencing and very specific in their deployment. Their their moniker has been to bring manufacturing back to 
uh, an assembly back to the U.S. So they're based in uh, San Jose, California, and in one uh, showcase uh, facility, they've got one U.S.-based uh, headquarters. Uh, scroll down a little bit, Chris, we can, uh, we can see that. They've got five different conference rooms. So they were the early adopters of the huddle room concept. So what they ended up by doing is, in a, in a life-size world, created a, a hub-and-spoke-based traditional video conferencing model, and they bought into the life-size 220 infrastructure. And so back now almost 10 years ago, uh, not only did they choose the right TV height, the right camera location, but they brought advantage in PBC in early. So we were helped the we helped the general construction folks get conduit and pathway and and power in all of the right locations without any additional charges to them. So that's one of the things that advantage and PVC like to do is uh, participate in the early design conversations, the floor plans, the layouts. Now they've got an auditorium space, they've got a boardroom, and they've got four sort of meet-up huddle rooms, which their primary function are audio calls and content sharing, like like most conference rooms. But again, 10 years ago, they they locked in a H323 and SIP-based infrastructure on the the life size platform, and ever since then, they've been communicating with their 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 Russian uh, office in mo mostly point-to-point -point calls. Um, what's great about their deployment is that not only have they stayed on support and warranty every year, uh, but as they've changed their firewall or created their internet service provider, they've had the right policies in place, so their call quality has been flawless. Now, moving forward, uh, the device-based bridging that they've done is no longer terribly sustainable. Those boxes that have embedded MCUs in them uh, in the U.S. market, particularly the California market, have gone by the wayside, leaning a little bit more towards cloud-based connections. And and we're now um, actively talking to them about higher density voice, video, streaming, uh, um, video conferencing platforms. And because they chose the life-size endpoint, it can pair directly to the life-size cloud platform. So, again, their return on investment was realized many, many years ago. Their total cost of ownership over time has just been the cost of maintenance um, and support. And they've had some failures and they've, they've been able to receive brand new boxes. All well and good and protects them for tomorrow. So um, the key takeaway for this is that the legacy codec-based video conferencing is not dead. The connected codec codec based experience, unified directory, multi-party calling, and mobile apps and desktop is the trend, and, and many of the manufacturers like LifeSize uh, support that evolution into the into the cloud, as it were. And with all of that said, I would, like, I'd like to pivot back to Advantage on the Javad story because um, it didn't go entirely perfectly, as perfect video conferencing would like, because they had some firewall-related policies um, and routing and security concerns. Uh, given what they do, they wanted to lock that network down. So uh, I think at this point, uh, Rob, you might be primary on, on the Javad story in the background. Again, the one-to-one the, the, the -one NAT policies, the firewall rules, and some of the SIP integration became a challenge that were just well, well, well out of our scope. And uh, went over to you. Yeah, Randy, thanks. Um, yeah, you know, Javad was a great, great success. Um, the uh, communications between the Moscow office and the San Jose office, they, they do that call every week and it's worked day in, day out for, for years. So it's it's really been a great solution for them. Um, you know, we always recommend clients implement enterprise level firewalls and security. Uh, it makes our jobs a lot easier to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to work. Uh, and we can control the flow of traffic going in and out of the firewall through firewall controls and, and make sure all that traffic is safe here without interfering with the performance of the, the video conferencing. So we were able to, to configure our, our sonic wall, our, our firewall on, on site there. And even though we replaced it several times over the years, just as you know, technology got better, uh, we were always able to ma maintain that, that uh, optimal call quality by uh, allowing proper traffic through without interference and without compromising any security. I mean, really, the net of that too is that it um, it can be uh, it can be daunting. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, complicated, right? There are there are changes that need to be made. I'm making a video call. I need certain amount of bandwidth, um, and that bandwidth has to get through. Uh, we like synchronous communication. The same speed up is the same speed down. 
that's true of even the FaceTime calls you may make with your family. So uh, for us, as we're evaluating an ecosystem that we're looking to deploy in, we're going to want to run some speed tests. And if it's not you that's managing your network, uh, as a video conferencing provider, we're going to want to know who it is. And if you don't have someone, we'd love to bring ad ad advantage in. The, the key takeaway for those of you that are, again, watching the recording or in live, uh, the, the advantage in, in PVC team aren't going to come in and just plug in some cameras and build some conference rooms. Uh, for a price, we'll do that, but it's not our favorite, and it, you, it could go wrong and it make us all look bad. What we do want to know, again, is that, that overall environment camera to router, what's the experience going to be like? And then beyond that, what are the end users' experience going to be when we when we pop into the conference room? I think for me then, Chris, that might be a good transition to the, the tea collection anecdote. Um, I wonder, though, um, if you want to see if there's anything that has come in over the Javad anecdote in chat, because I think I saw a couple of things, and then I'll launch the poll. Were there any follow-up questions related to the Javad story? But there were a couple uh, follow-up questions. Um, the, one of them came in about uh, the life-size gear itself and uh, breakage and um, what that looks like as that may happen for a customer. Um, breakage, what that like? Uh, so they have had a couple of cameras. One, um, we are recording, so I'll be kind about it, was, uh, was moved by hand and not by remote. And, technically not a warrantied covered event and because they had been a loyal life-size uh, support customer we were able to thread that needle and got them a brand new camera even though it was physical damage so like any uh, piece of equipment that a client would buy there's typically an annual percentage it's roughly about a 12 percent cost year over year uh, for a warranty but the warranty here is not only software upgrades but hardware uh, break fix and perfect video conferencing's on-site support. Now we were able to complement that uh, with advantage. So they didn't need to pay us any additional retainer because they already had an IT shop. Uh, the uh, but the break rate, I don't know the percentage recently, but it's fairly low. So across eight systems, they had uh, one that was um, physically broken. They had one that a, a system had a SIP lock up in five years. The average life cycle of a purchase purchase piece of hardware for most IT folks is about four to five years, and they're now they're on their seventh year of many of their devices, um, 10 on one of them. So, um, and on a, as an aside, they actually, they're, they're such smart dudes that they, they had one system in Moscow break that they figured out that it was a memory leak on a particular chip, and they wanted to source a used one so they could rip open the box and replace the memory chip. Um, of course, that would obviously avoid any warranty, but we were really impressed with their um, the sort of the reusing gear over many years. But uh, uh, with them and with any customer, we unfortunately can't support uh, breaking open the motherboard and, and swapping out a chip. But uh, uh, go that way if you want to fix it and put it in your home office. I don't know, uh, Rob or, or Steve, if there are any other equipment issues over at uh, Javad that I'm not aware of that uh, you might want to mention, but uh, stay on warranty. It's in your best interest. Yeah, I don't think so. I, you, you know, you mentioned the only two uh, issues we've had there. Uh, you know, all that, that equipment's been there for uh, uh, nine years almost, and it, it's worked great. You know, you know just, just those issues you mentioned. Otherwise, you know, it's been fantastic. It's, it's survived a series of, of computer refreshes, networking equipment refreshes, uh, firewall refreshes, and you know the, the one thing we, we have had to tackle is, the, is that equipment, which is uh, pretty impressive in, uh, in the IT and electronics world to see equipment last that long. We've been impressed. Yeah, it really does hit the, the crux of most of our clients and, and prospects challenges. The USB world is exciting. The various amounts of cameras that are coming to market are, are blowing up, so the, the options are almost infinite. Uh, and H323 and SIP calls are still the core base of most video conferencing, and be it Polycom or Cisco, Yealink or LifeSize, they all make really solid state purposely designed. And for us, LifeSize has always been the disruptor, the innovator. So uh, while those other solutions are great, um, it, if a customer wants some strong stability and a reliability over time, we lead with LifeSize. Uh, it makes it uh, makes it easy. But as you can see here, the audio and the the color quality is fantastic. Um, any other questions about Javad that came in, either Chris's? I know, again, I see some blinking lights for chatting, but I'm going to pay attention here or not there instead. 
I did see one that uh, they, uh, somebody wanted to know about how you resolve the control of video call and voice calls in the same room. How do you resolve the control of video calls and voice calls in the same room? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, back in Javad's world, um, this was pre-SIP, uh, if you can even imagine that, and it's not even that long ago, but this was before um, they had they had a short tail system that wasn't speaking SIP. Today they have a short tail system that speaks SIP because one of the short tail support contracts got them that latest software upgrade. So LifeSize from its inception and most of the video providers from their inception always had the ability to speak SIP, session initiated protocol. So today, like me, they could have one device that does a voice call and they just come into the room and they dial from a, a digital keypad a phone number. It's going to transgress over the short tail system out that PRI or SIP trunks over they have. It's not technically a life size call, but we're using the good audio uh, on that uh, again through their through their phone system. Uh, now, though, we would move them. We've got to get on their salesperson to do this. We would move them. Uh, to a cloud package where it's more of a meet me there bridge, much like the bridge we're on today. Most of the conferencing and audio control, you dial into a meeting, be it a virtual meeting ID, and then there's a toll free number and a meeting ID, much like any other audio call. So the dial out features are less and less needed these days, but the controlling of that is done on the, the life size touchscreen phone. It could also be done in, a, in, in the Javad world, that's what they've done. They use the remote control, though so this for some people is too complicated. The touch screen gets better. And then we are able to do AMX or Crestron programming. I don't know if that was the nature of that person's question, but yes, we can support third party integration um, for for controlling as well. On the newer life size systems, there's actually a, a remote control app you can download on an iPad or a phone, so it's kind of cool. It's a third party app that you can use to control life size systems as well. Anything else on that one, Chris? I don't know if any clarification questions came in over chat. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, do you want to move into the tea collection talk? I'm going to launch the poll first. Okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, there's a, a a couple of questions out there. One of them: What stops you from doing uh, video? Um, and then there's three questions on that. Um, and then if uh, those of you that are in the meeting that may want to come in on live, we do want to let you know that towards the end, we are going to plan to keep this to about uh, 40 minutes in total content. We're about 20 in. Uh, we are planning to stay a little later for those of you that want to stay on. And then anyone who wants to come in on video, uh, we can escalate you up to a video call. So we have launched the poll. Uh, the first question being, has network bandwidth needs and cost upgraded stop you from deploying video conferencing? Yes, no, or maybe. Uh, second question is, what's the biggest concern for deploying video conferencing, um, user training and adoption, complexity of the solutions, or lack of features and functions, or one, and some of these are single choice, some of them are multi choice. And then um, the third and final question, who manages your network readiness for mission critical applications? Um, one of them is um, nobody, we just do, we just throw bandwidth at it. Um, haven't had anyone choose that yet. Uh, we have in-house, in not in-horse, in-house resources for this, um, a vendor with our coordination and a vendor, um, and we hope for the best, meaning I outsource it entirely. Uh, there's some, obviously, I see some more questions. Uh, there are some more answers coming in the poll. I'll end the poll in a, a minute, but there's obviously some buried assumption in here for perfect video conferencing and for Advantage. Uh, we want to earn your business ultimately, and not all vendors or, or partners are right for all customers. And so some of these questions really point us in the direction of a tight match and are we the right folks to do business with each other. And uh, Steve and I have been, as, as owners of our respective companies, we've been committed to having that as a candid conversation upfront and as quickly as possible uh, so that out of respect for you, we're not going to waste your time. Ours usually comes to a quick assessment of some of these these questions. So, if you've if you've thought about video conferencing, what has what has failed, or what why haven't you done it? And it's usually about adapting to the technology and adopting it. Sort of this adaptation um, crux that people get into. And then um, it really is about expense management. It's not cheap right, to to get a Steve or a Randy. Uh, the way we roll, we 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 don't charge premiums, but we don't work for free, and we want to make sure we get that balance right for you. It is our it is our premise going into this that you can spend 
less money by engaging with us. So you might be spending money on trouble tickets or crappy IT, or you might um, be flying and, and traveling for meetings. Don't spend any more money. Spend less money and get more is, is really where we lead. So, um, yeah, about even. So I'll just answer the poll. I'm going to close that out. Um, so, Steve, just for your edification, for the um, most folks have said uh, yes to the network needs being a, a challenge and stopping them from video conferencing. One said maybe, totally get that, uh, uh, and a no. Um, they, maybe they already have it. Uh, big concern about deploying video conferencing, the solid winner there, um, expense and management and upfront and ongoing. So that concern for total cost of ownership or that uh, immediate return on investment. Um, surprisingly enough, complexity of solutions didn't come in. Um, it, uh, it is a crowded, cloudy uh, market today in video conferencing. Uh, and so uh, we see that happen. Lack of functions came in with one vote. I understand uh, that um, uh, that's one of our core things is to take a look at that. And then that final one, Steve, and, and Advantage folks, the, the clear winner there is um, a vendor with our coordination. So, and less of the uh, no, we just throw bandwidth at it, or we don't have anyone for it, or we just hope for the best with the vendor. 67% uh, in on a vendor with our coordination. So I think that fits um, uh, fits your key sweet spot. So I think with that, we wanted to you guys lead the uh, tea collections one because you were the, the the spearhead on that. So I think Chris, if we wouldn't mind moving over to tea collections, and then uh, I think Adam, you're going to queue up the the background on that one. Yeah, so um, Tea Collections has been a client of ours for about what, uh, five years or so, maybe, or a little bit, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, and uh, lately, they've been um, having a lot more of their workforce work remotely, work from home, um, maybe because just the Bay Area traffic is so terrible. But what they wanted to do was increase their engagement um, in their conference rooms in between people. Um, so going back about a year or so, they needed a, a unified platform for all of that. Um, so we look towards Skype, um, Skype for Business to work for instant messaging, VoIP, video conferencing, um, and they've been putting that together and integrating that in with their um, Office 365 cloud services and things like that, um, mostly through our, our help here at Advantage Micro. Um, but they needed to bring their conference rooms to the 21st century. Previously, they had just had a projector and a conference phone in their rooms, and that wasn't really um, wasn't really adequate. Uh, they were losing engagement in their meetings, you know, their conference rooms, they only have a handful of them and they're packed from morning till afternoon. Um, and they wanted to get more out of them. So that's where we reached out to uh, Perfect VC for the uh, guidance and equipment and uh, integration and uh, partnered with them to uh, put all that together and deploy that. And so far it's been a, it's been a great success. And, um, I can see every day that I'm in there, the engagement increasing. Every meeting is becoming more of a uh, collaborative um, experience. And even outside of the conference rooms, that's helped unify everyone's communication. So it all kind of uh, all kind of comes together in the conference room and works together with uh, the pre-existing network and equipment that they have. And so far, uh, it's been going wonderful. Yeah, I mean, talk about a solution that pays for itself. I mean, we, we certainly you know have a growing client here that's got a lot of a lot of uh, initiatives on their to-do list, and one of the things they don't need to do is to keep throwing uh, manpower and time in a cobbled together conference room solution. Right. Um, so with, with the proper guidance of Perfect VC, we were able to really uh, implement the correct equipment process, uh, mm -hmm. and it just it takes it off the IT list to allow us to work on other yeah. initiatives and, and help them with their success. Exactly. I think the, uh, the key thing for me on this one is uh, I say oftentimes that I like to listen more than I talk, and current evidence would suggest otherwise. Uh, however, in, in this particular case, uh, I'm a guy who likes to come in and wipe the slate clean and start fresh and learn what what's driving a customer towards a video conferencing solution. Greenfields are so much fun to build a, a comprehensive video conferencing strategy or a unified communications uh, uh, roadmap. They already had Skype for Business, and up until recently, I uh, admittedly was a bit of a bigot against the Skype for Business experience, just because we hadn't had endpoints that could optimize that, that Skype experience. So a Skype user myself, I had relegated that into uh, cat chats or videos with my nieces and nephews or some family talk, not a business application. Uh, and then 
uh, much of the credit of the Advantage Micro folks, they were looking at the client's overall long-term best interest, and they are a Microsoft shop. They had already made the Office 365 decisions. They had already started adopting workflow into chat and messaging and integrating Skype and the Office 365 into conference room scheduling. So it, was, it wasn't just about video conferencing. So had I come in with blinders in that um, and bigotry uh, to, to my favorite products, I would have missed an opportunity uh, to, to serve this client's needs well. And, and much like the Advantage team and Adam pointed out there, what they really wanted was open space collaboration, the ability to go from a desktop to a mobile phone to a conference room and, and not have it be a different platform. And any of the platforms you'll see on our website would have serviced those conference rooms really, really well. The touch screen here is easy to do. You guys join this webinar quickly by a click. Again, new stuff to T-Collection would have been a, an upheaval that was unnecessary. So we ended up by bringing in the Logitech Smart Docs, the Microsoft um, Surface, in a purposely built USB integrated docking station. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty impressive. And uh, we did a standard video conferencing deployment as certified by Microsoft and Logitech, and we had problems. There were network issues, and so I'm going to hand it back to uh, Advantage in just a moment, because when we plugged it in and we expected content sharing to come through flawlessly, which generally does, there were issues that were in the deep end of the Microsoft pool that I couldn't fix. Uh, and so when we do projects like a Skype for Business or life-size deployment, and there are firewall rules. For the record, we've got some resources for that, but we would rather have the customer resources because you know where the IP mapping goes and those bones are buried. We want to make sure that you engage with us, you know that you'll bring in those resources when the time is right. So to Adam, I know I think we had some challenges actually getting video calls and content sharing to go through consistently, and you had to take some pretty aggressive steps to fix that. You want to yeah. talk about those? Or, yeah. Yeah. It was, um, uh, uh, it's a great question. I mean, there's, there's all, there was a lot of um, trial and error there. Um, like you had mentioned earlier, it is a bleeding edge solution. Um, I believe the Smart Doc was only um, just released, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, about a year or so ago, maybe. Um, so it's a pretty new product. Um, the Skype for Business Room solution that the software runs on um, is also pretty new. Uh, so it's a little bit difficult to find uh, solutions to problems like uh, screen sharing not working. Well, that was because the televisions within the room were set to a 4K resolution. So what the Skype platform was trying to do was route 4K video stream over the internet. And as I'm sure anyone who uses Netflix knows, that's pretty bandwidth intensive. Um, and also when you're looking at a computer screen or you know general screen sharing or what have you, um, you know, 1080p full HD resolution is totally fine. So that was one little quirk um, that was just part of uh, troubleshooting, adapting to their network and what they have, what they um, what they need, um, as well as other things like making sure that uh, everything's set up correctly in Active Directory and that everything syncs together between the Office 365 cloud and uh, making sure everybody's on the correct version of uh, Microsoft Office on their workstations, so that they have the latest version of Skype and can dial in correctly. Um, all of those things kind of come with the implementation uh, and there's a big lesson learned in just in, in preparation for the for the product, um, preparation for setting up the equipment, um, and just trial and error and, and, and training with the users that uh, both uh, you and I collaborated on, um, I'd say very well, because it's, it's, it's picked up um, pretty quickly. I think a key thing, too, for, for them is that um, they had, as you mentioned earlier, they had lots of other priorities going in, and they came in with a desired budget that was, was too small. I mean, really, they didn't they didn't initially budget what was needed to get it done right, um, and you know they were their their legacy experience was some great just USB cameras and the microphones and speakers of a of a laptop, and so the the group of people huddled around the kind of okay audio or maybe the phone adjacent to the computer dialing in, and they were getting by making calls and making it happen, uh, but the technology became a distraction, and then in our quote. Uh, having had listened to what Adam had said about their hodgepodge experience and the challenges it was creating for Advantage as their IT shop, uh, we came in with a 
a bigger, deeper, more forklifty kind of solution. As we peeled that back, the thing we were able to convince the customer to stay with, and I, I and as I've talked to them, they couldn't be any happier, is we actually locked down the cabling pretty pretty aggressively because these are flex spaces, it's an open workspace and you know, most of today's workers, if they see a table that can move, they're going to move it. If they see uh, a piece of technology in the way of them having a, an open table lunch, they're going to they're going to move it, and they may accidentally disconnect it, or they may just intentionally disconnect it and forget to reconnect it, which then becomes an IT event. So historically, devices like Life Size, uh, for us, set it, forget it, and they you know they just don't get disconnected or or more stable for tomorrow's conference call after someone has gone to the room today to break it, not really break it, but to, to change it. What we did for, for Advantage and, and T-Collection is really work on good in-room instructions. So if they accidentally dissembled something, they would know how to put it back together. Um, and then we cable tied things, put it in cleanly and the sort of again, these open flexible spaces where they were used to tr trip hazards and cables. They were used to that, they didn't think anything of it. So as we came in and, and did not even sort of the in-floor best practices or in-wall best practices, just made it look tighter and prettier. What it did for them is created tomorrow and the day after and now a long-term solution that's just, the conference room is just about meeting and collaboration and doing work, not about making sure the technology is up and running and stable. So, uh, and it wasn't, it was a quarter of the price of our original bid and, and great business for all parties involved. So um, to anyone who listens to this in the future, uh, I don't want, um, the perfect video conference brand or the advantage um, to sound too expensive because we're flexible. And that really is the key message there is that we'll work with you and the terms that you set. Uh, and then we'll push back when we see appropriately because there are some things that just will help your organization save money uh, in the long term. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, the key point that we wanted to mention here, gentlemen, was the again about the flexible workspace and clumsy wiring. So I feel like we've, with that being covered, uh, Chris, I wonder if there are any questions that came in any clarification questions you'd have from what um, Adam or I said about the T-Collection deployment? Yeah, there were a few. Uh, the, on the T-Collection deployment, somebody was wondering uh, whether the uh, network uh, setup was a little bit more difficult or easier in that solution. A um, person said they, they've had a little bit of problems getting Skype to work in their environment and just wondering uh, what you guys had to deal with in, in your work with this deployment. Yeah, I, I can speak to that. I mean, one of the things that we have to do as an IT provider, I mean, in, in, in these days in 2018, it sort of takes a village to manage IT, so to speak. Um, you know, there, there's really not one individual that's, you know, master of all. Um, so when it came to the implementation, it was a meeting between uh, Adam and Rob over here, Rob, Rob being uh, our organization CTO and, and lead implementer, um, and, and Adam being uh, the boots on the ground, day-to-day uh, -day representative for the client. Uh, to really come together and understand the implementation scope and, and, and what had to happen and, and divvy up and, and, and handle responsibilities, uh, you know, separately here. Uh, and, and through that, with additional help desk technician, we're able to roll out all the software, uh, able to go through the checklist on the, on the firewall rules, test, adjust as necessary, um, and then come out the other end with, with, with a perfectly tuned solution. Yeah, that, that's... Um... Also collaborating with um, some of their other vendors, like external DNS needed changing, mass managed by someone else, internal DNS needed changing, that Rob was able to take care of. So a lot of the more technical stuff that goes um, in there, uh, we're able to jump on pretty quickly and have a good understanding of, and you know, have a connection with that other vendor and just kind of get everything together, um, work towards getting it implemented. So it wasn't uh, wasn't simple, um, but it was uh, it was very effective. And, and work very well, and, and they're very happy with it so far. Yeah, there's a, we've got about a minute before our- uh, Chris, our, I wouldn't mind- uh, Go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I, would, I wouldn't mind saying about that from a perfect video conferencing perspective, while it's not rocket surgery, it is science. There, not all networks are created equally. Um, and for us, uh, we do have a bit of a pause on being able to deliver a Skype for business um, the solution if the customer doesn't have a dedicated Skype for Business uh, provider or IT, and even the, the Logitech Smart Dock, the Crestron Mercury, those devices, the, the Starleaf clients that do Skype, uh, they all generally in their app notes request that you know who your Skype for Business 
liaison or resources because not all Skype for Business are completely cloud or completely prem based and because of that hybrid scenario you typically do need to have some deep understanding from a video call perspective be it H323 systems like life size or cloud connected devices or USB to computer devices we're always going to want class of service and quality of service in a high latency environment uh, so these VLAN practices are something that we're well versed at assessing for customers and I think that's again what uh, what T collection was up against is they had competing resources for pipe uh, and then I can point someone in the right direction to get the bandwidth I need to have a call quality like this someone like advantage is going to have to help you program that router or that uh, that LAN WAN infrastructure to get it to get it perfect so uh, we will help you uh, and guide you but that should be part of your consideration if you're thinking about a multi-site video conferencing deployment or multi-room video conferencing deployment absolutely I know you wanted to wrap up, Chris. So back to you. I'll yeah, we've uh, we've reached about the forty-minute mark, and uh, just wanted to. Uh, I know we talked about uh, continuing on with some questions after this, so I don't know what uh, everybody's availability is, but I do want to remind people and uh, about how to learn more about Advantage Microsystems and Perfect Video Conferencing. Uh, you can find uh, learn more about Advantage Microsystems by visiting their website at advantagemicro.net. And for Perfect Video Conferencing, you can catch us at perfectvc.com. And we have a five-part blog series on there on how to set up a video conference room without getting fired that uh, includes some valuable lessons on what it uh, means to put together a video conferencing solution in your business. So I don't know, gentlemen, if you want to stick around for some more calls or if we should uh, wrap things up. Uh, are there any live uh, chat questions because I know there were some historically that maybe we didn't get to. Uh, again, we can if anyone wants to come in live over video to talk to us, we will we'll open that option up. Um, and then I guess for those that are interested in a shorter module, Steve, maybe we um, maybe we stop recording. It stops um, and stay on just for the purposes of uh, uh, tightness for future viewers. All, All right. right. Good. All right. So uh, on behalf, I'll say thanks first, then you. So on behalf of Perfect Video Conferencing, I'm going to stop recording in about 60 seconds. Randy Marcotte here. You can reach me at 516-282-2812. And we appreciate you tuning into this. The outcomes for me was really get to know us a little bit, uh, understand some of these deployments. And if you're interested, let's do a little bit of homework to get to know each other to see if there's a match. We'd love to earn your business, but it is a it is a small process to do it and to do it right. Uh, Steve, I'd hand it off to you at Advantage for a wrap up. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. This has been a lot of fun. Um, again, best number to reach us on is 877-938-6888. Uh, more than happy to schedule some time uh, if you'd like for us to uh, help evaluate your current network environment, make sure you're, you're primed and ready to go for uh, a video conferencing solution, uh, or any other IT-related concerns that you'd like some attention on. Um, so feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to uh, spend some time and uh, potentially earn your business.